Hello students and parents. Uh, welcome to the Yard Hub, uh, now online for the time being. Uh, this is our Matisse class. We are gonna be working with acrylic. Uh, some of you guys have already done the first and second class. If you guys have not, this is class number one and you guys could uh, you know, later do class number two on the next video and class number three. If you guys wanna skip to class number three, you guys could definitely do that. Or if you guys just wanna start from scratch, all the three videos will be up there, one, two, and three. You guys could do that at your convenience. I know you guys are at home right now and you guys have a little bit of extra time and flexibility. If you guys just wanna sit and do one long project just in one day, that is perfectly fine. Just don't get burnt out, okay? Uh, today, we are just gonna be using an eraser. I have a very fun needed eraser. Uh, and I'm gonna be using a 2B pencil because I want you guys to see what I'm uh, drawing. So that's the 2B pencil right there. Uh, for the next sessions, we just need a basic set of acrylic paints. In the studio, I'm gonna be using one called Handy Art, which is really basic. Um, in the actual art studio, we have really nice acrylic paints. We're not gonna be doing or using any of those just because we wanna make this as house friendly as you can. You know, usually the materials that you get are at home or uh, the ones that you have bought here or there, those will work fine or anything that you guys could just get from Amazon, uh, Michaels, Target, or any online store. Uh, the other thing we're gonna be using is just a basic round brush, okay? Uh, this is like a number six, so it's kind of in the middle, not too big, not too small, but it's just a very basic round brush. And I recommend just a paper plate. Some of you guys might have fancier stuff. You could use that, you know, professional wooden palette. Some of you guys might have a plexiglass palette or reusable palette that paper palettes, anything really, really works. But I know that this might be something that you might be able to find at home. All right. Uh, so today we are going to start just with a really basic we are gonna start drawing, okay? Uh, and we're gonna start drawing very basic shapes. It's just a pear and an apple. Uh, you guys can look at the image also through the website. Right now, we are just gonna start by drawing basic, 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 okay? Um, I We will be erasing a lot, so make sure that you guys don't draw too dark. If you guys draw very dark, it's really hard to fix that later, okay? So what we're gonna do, first of all, just like we do in most of the classes, we're gonna do just a mini frame around our artwork. Okay, just a little mini frame. This mini frame is serves two things, okay? Number one, which is probably the most important. If you guys push the acrylic paint a little further than that frame, you're probably gonna get it on your table and your parents will not be too happy, okay? So that little frame gives you some flexibility for you guys not to get your artwork on your table. And the other thing is, just in case you like your artwork, it actually looks nice when it has a tiny frame on there, all right? So here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is our table surface, right? And that table surface is just gonna be a little diagonal line uh, that just goes all throughout the piece, all right? The next thing that we're gonna do, which is the most important thing, because it's the thing that's closest to us, is gonna be the pair, okay? So for the pair, I'm just gonna do a little circle, okay? Just a little circle, pretty simple. And I'm gonna do a little hat, okay? I'm just gonna do the top part of the hat. If this was a real hat, it would probably have a thing that goes around here, and now we have our Vaquero uh, pair, but we're not doing a Vaquero pair, we're just doing a regular pair. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase those lines here. All right, here we go. Let's get rid of that line, we don't need it, okay? Here we go. So now we have something that actually looks like a pair. The next thing we're gonna do is the big shape of the apple, okay? The big shape of the apple is gonna be a little behind the pear. So we wanna make sure that we overlap. And for right now, I'm just gonna do a circle. You see how my circle goes over the pear? That's perfectly fine. Later on, I just, I'll just i just go back over here and I'll just erase this thing, okay? Now look, the apple is behind the pear, all right? The other thing that makes something look like it's behind something else is where they are on the table. So the pair is closer to us. If I do a little line here, we could see that the pair is closer and the apple is further behind, okay? If this, if the apple was a little further down, our brain would be going all crazy because it makes no sense that something is closer to us, 
but it's also behind something that's further away. It's kind of counterintuitive, all right? The basic shapes are there. This is all we need for the beginning, okay? If you guys would want to pause here, this would be a great time to pause my video, just kind of follow these steps along um, and just kind of figure out the big shapes, uh, compose them very well. Remember, there's going to be little shadows that are going to go to the left. So give yourself a little bit more space on the left than we have on the right. So if you look, this little space here, and there's a little bit more space over here, all right? So basic shapes, they're in here, right? So if you need, pause this part, but I'm just gonna continue. So once I have the, the pear here, the apple, the apple is not a circle. That's gonna be a kind of funny looking apple if it was just a circle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little diagonal line followed by a little flat W in the bottom, just really flat W. So if I know that a W looks like this, my W is gonna look like that, see? Very, very flat, all right. So we'll erase this. Like I said, we don't need that, but it's good to understand. Now, somewhere in the middle here, on the middle top part, I'm gonna do a one and a two. We're doing a flat ABC, so now this is a flat V, almost looks like a bird. First we did a flat W, which W's look like this, V's look like this, but our W's are gonna look like this, and our V's are gonna look like this, okay? Really, really flat shapes. Now we're gonna do that little stem that comes from here. And that's pretty good. Looks like an apple, a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go over to my pear. The only thing I'm gonna to do to my pear is I'm gonna make my shapes a little more square. You don't have to do more square shapes, by the way. If your shapes are round and you like it round, keep it that way. Whatever works with you better. Just the only one thing that we do wanna remember is that the pear should be further down and the apple should be further up because that way things are overlapping logically. All right, so we have the big shapes. We have the, the big shapes that kind of look like what they're supposed to, right? Now, when we're working with acrylic, we are gonna have to think about a few things, okay? We are gonna have to be thinking about a highlight we do have to think about midtones. We do have to be thinking about a core shadow. And we do have to be thinking about a cast shadow. Okay? <clears throat> so these are very important. We are going to start with our highlights, okay? The highlight is the place where light hits directly, okay? On our objects, this is gonna be on our top right. So I'm just gonna make a little bit of a make your own continent or country here. That just looks really fun, kind of weird looking, okay? I'm also gonna do the same thing up here. Just really fun, kind of weird looking. All right, that's it. Two little, you know, continenty looking shapes, you know, just something that's uh, represents an uneven surface. That's a pair, okay? The next thing we are gonna do is the highlight on the apple, okay? And the apple is a red apple, so those guys are actually pretty, pretty dark. So the highlight of the apple is just gonna be very small, very, very small and really direct, all right? Good job. All right, next step is our mid-tone. So when we're talking about the color of the objects, most of the objects are the color of their mid-tones, okay? The shadows are usually a little muddy, a little dirty. The highlights are usually uh, too white or they have too much of the, of the color of light. So it tends to be very, very white, sometimes yellow, sometimes gold. So the majority of this picture is actually gonna be mid-tones, okay? So we're gonna try to do two, two mid-tones for the uh, pair, okay? One of them is gonna be a little lighter, the other one's gonna be a little darker. So here we go. We're just gonna follow the initial shape here. Do, 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 do. Oh, stop, because that's where the hat goes. Now, we're gonna go, and we're gonna go with the shape of the circle, all right? Do, 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 do. You could make it uneven, you could make it really even. If you make it really even, you have a perfect pair. So you made, you made the nicest pair that ever exists, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just do a mid -tone. All right, here we go. Now, this is a mid-tone, that's gonna be a mid-tone. Now we're gonna be doing our core shadow, okay? What in the world is a core shadow? 
for those of you who this is the first class, a core shadow is the shadow of an object. So think of it as the center of the earth, the core of something. That means that it's part of that big something, in this case, a pair. And that shadow we are going to push to the very far back. Also a little uneven. Do, 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 do. Stop and then straight. Okay. And we're going to go up and down. So right now our pair kind of looks kind of weird. It has a lot of boundaries, but it'll help us for the future. All right. We are going to wait a little bit on this cast shadow. Okay. We want to, we want to see how the, what, what this cast shadow, uh, how this cast shadow works and how it affects things. All right. So now we're going to do the mid-tone on the apple and the apple is super, 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 super dark. It's really red. So it really is just going to have one bigger mid-tone here. All right, here we go. Do, do, do. And once I stop here, I'm just going to go to the very bottom. Here we go. All right. This is going to be our mid-tone. This is going to be our core shadow. Really good. So we're done with the big shapes. We're done with the big shadows on the shapes. Now let's talk about the cast shadow. The cast shadow is a little fun and kind of tricky. So the cast shadow, think about it as a spell. You're casting a spell. You're casting something on something else. Uh, that's what the cast shadow is. So what we're going to do, the pair is going to cast the shadow to the left side because the light is coming from the right side. Then it's going to go over into the actual apple and connect to the top part, okay? And theoretically it goes around and to the back, but we can't see that because the apple is in the way. Now, the apple is gonna cast a shadow onto our table surface right here. And once it gets to here, then it's just gonna have a little part that goes onto our wall. And that's gonna be pretty much it for the big shadows, all right? Once we start painting, we'll start playing around with this concept a little bit more. So this, you guys, is the basic drawing to our shapes. We are not quite done, but this is a place where if you wanna pause, you could go ahead and pause the video, just look at the drawing, kinda of try to make it up a little bit, kind of adjust it a tiny bit, and then we're gonna go on to the next step. While you guys do that, I'm gonna go ahead and erase my flat W and my flat V and just a regular W. And the regular All right, here we go. All right. So assuming you guys are done with this part, you know, there's no rush. No, no, no rush whatsoever. I know you guys might like hatching a lot, some of you. Some of you guys might feel a little uh, kind of not so happy with hatching, but it's something we want to do. And it's something that is going to help this drawing, not just for now, but for the long run, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heavy my contour. And heavy my contour is almost like an outline, but it is not exactly an outline. Uh, the lines are implied on a contour. They don't necessarily have to connect all the time. Um, and it just makes it uh, just a little more visible because remember, we're gonna add paint on this and if our line is not strong enough, we're gonna lose our drawing, all right? So in this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start hatching. And we're only going to hatch in one direction, and we're going to hatch lightly, okay? Remember, hatching is moving your lines in one direction, not in zigzag, or not in many directions, okay? So this would be the better hatching. Eh, this might be okay to no, and this definitely is a no, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to ha add hatching on the entire pair very lightly, except on the highlights. And you guys don't have to do long lines, okay? If long lines are really hard for you to do, just keep them short, okay? Short is okay. So as long as they're consistent, we're looking for consistent lines. We don't wanna do darker lines, we don't wanna do lighter lines, we just wanna keep them consistent. All right, there we go. All right, step number one, done. Now. This is our lighter midtone, right? Now we're gonna go into a little darker midtone. So we're gonna go hatch again, but only to that other line. So only to that second line. Make sure you guys follow the steps. Sometimes students try to rush this and they start with a very dark 
and then they have a really hard time connecting the darks to the lights, it's much better if you guys are patient and you build them up, okay? All right, there we go. All right, now for my final thing. Oops, I forgot to do this little guy. Don't forget this little guy. Just imagine you guys are doing it with me. All right, so now for my final thing, I'm gonna start doing my core shadow right here, okay? So I'm gonna start hatching a little heavy and that's the last line. If you guys did not do all three lines, it's okay. If you guys want to do all three lines, just make sure.